see just uh, the introduction about the blockchain what is blockchain and all those so before i'm uh, going to this uh, actual blockchain what is blockchain and all those things see this uh, how the traditional softwares are working see how the traditional systems for example a banking website how the banking website is working from the banking so or banking application so we all are the customers of banks some bank maybe sba or uh, some other bank punjab national bank or some other bank we are having that account and and uh, so in order to do some transaction first of all we need to approach the bank right create an account so in order to create the account there is so many formalities are there something like we need to submit our kyc form or we need to submit our id card other card and so all other things then only they will uh, give uh, this uh, bank account to us so we need to approach somebody we need to approach the bank to get an account then only we need we can transfer or uh, do the transactions so this is the banking scenario this is the banking scenario or for example and after that okay after that uh, all our information we are providing so many information like our name address email id uh, other card number so many information we are giving to them and all information will be stored in a particular server machine actually it is in a server machine we are storing the bank is stored all the transactions in a server machine so similarly all other customers so many customers are having sbi having so many customers so all customers all information will be stored in a particular server machine something like this this is suppose called a yes, server machine in the server machine we are storing all the details and this server machine is highly protected and secure and everything and this is called a centralized system centralized system another okay. example i can say uh, irctc website we are using irctc website right uh so in the irctc website uh so many information all the uses information we are the users of irctc so all the uses so the here uh, six uses are here shown one two three four five six is all six uses information are stored in the database in the centralized database or we can say all the train information all the fare or suppose i am booking the train ticket to somebody that get ticket information everything is stored on this server machine and we all are accessing data from the same server machine so this is what uh, sometimes irctc seems to be very uh, congested or it is uh, very 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 uh, high sometimes uh, in the peak times so yeah 11 o'clock or something yeah and other country sometimes it is uh, going to which is because we all are accessing this centralized database at the same time we all yes. are requesting the data from this server machine yes. that is why it is going to be a bottleneck or something it is contested so this is a centralized system this is a centralized system or a centralized approach centralized approach in order to do anything all all data is stored on a server machine all the data so the uh, the problem for this system is uh, what uh, suppose these all are the machines right the server is a machine computer high performed or high performance computer that is a server machine suppose this server machine crashes for some time okay sometimes uh, it might happen because it is a machine if it is crashes for some time what will happen nobody will able to access the data nobody will access able to access. yeah or the entire system fails nobody we can uh, log into the system irctc uh, system nobody will able to log in because our username and password is stored over there okay. or uh, nobody will able to uh, use the system that is the problem with the centralized approach that is the problem or uh, in the banking scenario as well in the banking scenario as well all customers all information are stored over here what is our balance all those things are stored over the centralized uh, database so the problem for this system is suppose uh, you can see sometimes in the internet banking uh, due to the server maintenance we are uh, the site is unavailable or some some message you may get sometimes it is because yes. all data are stored in the server machine and there are some 
of what is uh, going on on the server. So and during that time, uh, nobody will be able to access the data. So these are the problem with the centralized approach. These are the problems. And uh, so in the traditional system, in the traditional system, what all other system you are uh, uh, looking around, you can see all our centralized approach. All data is concentrated on a particular server machine. Even it is Facebook.com or WhatsApp or Instagram uh, or any other thing. What are, what are all the things? Everything is centralized. Everything is centralized to a particular point or particular organization. We need to approach that person or that organization to get the data. For the banking scenario, we need to go and approach the bank to create an account. In the IRCTC also, all data are stored in an IRCTC database. Or if you are booking a ticket through Make My Trip, there is a Make My Trip office is there. There is a server maybe there. We are storing all the data on the server. On the Facebook, WhatsApp, everything is concentrating or storing the data on the, it is called a centralized. So the main disadvantage of the system is, um, if the server crashes, everything goes. That is our main, nobody can get the data. This has happened in WhatsApp as well. Okay, WhatsApp also yes. sometimes I had uh, one or two minutes, it is, uh, it is stuck or something. Yeah, it is also. So this is called decentralized or distributed system. Okay, decentralized or distributed. So here you can't see any server, right? There is no server approach yes. is there. That is no server. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six nodes are there. One, two, three, six. Here, the node means it is just a computer. Okay, just a computer. Uh, scenario, we are, uh, node means it is a, just a computer. You just assume it is a computer. So here, six nodes are there. They are interconnected. They are connected each other. Six computers are connected each other. And, uh, all are having equal priority. All are having, all are involved in this network. All okay. the six nodes are connected to each other and uh, no one is better than other. All are having equal priority. And if you, this is called a distributed system. It is called a distributed. And uh, the data, okay, if it is an IRCTC website, we are storing here, this person, this server has uh, super privilege. Man. He is having the full control, full authority. Okay, okay because uh, this is the server. And uh, here, no such things are there. Only six nodes are participating in this network. And uh, in here, if you want to store a data, the data is stored in each and every node. Each and every node. Data is stored in each and every node. Because there is no centralized system is there, no centralized. Each and every node data is distributed. This is called a distributed thing, distributed. And the blockchain is a distributed technology as well. Blockchain is a distributed technology. That means only this thing, data is distributed to each and every day. Suppose if you want to store some data over here, that data store on this node and in this particular node, this one, this one, this one, this one. So all the six nodes contain the same data. Or it is called a distributor. It is, so the advantage is that if one or two or three systems fail means nothing happened to the system. Distributor, distributor. So blockchain is distributor. So the advantage is all the time it is available. 24 by 7 yes, time sir. it is available. Okay, so and these nodes are geographically separated. Uh, not all nodes are in, from Calcutta or uh, Andhra Pradesh or something. This node may be in India, this may be uh, USA, this may be in Sri Lanka, this may be Brazil and all those things. This is yes. geographically separated. So data will be completely available. Suppose India government is uh, banned for this blockchain, then also this data will not be gone anywhere. This data will be there in the network. Okay, because it is geographically separated. So this is called the basic distributed concept. Distributed concept. So blockchain is a distributor. Uh, data is distributed. 
and uh, in the blockchain what is the definition of blockchain blockchain definition is nothing but blockchain is a distributed decentralized system blockchain is a distributed decentralized system distributed and decentralized so distributor means nothing but data is distributed and the blockchain is distributed decentralized as well decentralized decentralized in the sense there is no centralized server is there there is no limit so there is no centralized authority is controlling the system yeah. nobody is controlling here it is centralized right a bank is a centralized one bank is controlling our transaction if you want to do some transaction first of all we need to approach the bank then only we can yeah, do some transaction he is the uh, main thing or the centralized one yes okay in the irctc also there is a irctc office is there irct officials can ban your account anything is possible yes. from there they are controlling and uh, so make my trip is another example so your all the details can be controlled by a make my trip office is there some official may be there they are controlling all the transaction yes. they can have a control over the system because he is the superman or the supreme power for that system in the banking scenario rbi may be the supreme power he can control all other transaction in the irctc website some government official may be there he may be the supreme power that he is controlling he has the uh, supreme power he is controlling he is the centralized authority he is the centralized authority and um, so this is called a centralized centralized or we can say it is a client server model client server model so this middleman this person is called a server machine he is control he is having the supreme power he is having more power than others he can control all other nodes or it is a master slave model he is the master remaining all the nodes of the slave something like that that is a yeah, centralized but here see there is no server is there nobody is control no node is better than the other node all are having the equal priority all the node having the equal priority or nobody is controlling the system there is no one is controlling the system all the node having the equal priority so this is called a decentralized there is no if the problem for the centralized the system is that he is having more power right he is having more power in the banking scenario he is having the more power and we all are depositing our money to this uh, main party or the third person so one human having more power than others so he can do some corruptions or he can do some illegal activities definitely he can do so yeah that is the uh, called the it is called the centralized he is having some supreme power is there he is having more power if he want he can do some uh, illegal activities definitely he can do in the case of irctc some uh, irctc government official like he can book the ticket he can cancel if he wish he can cancel our ticket and uh, book his own ticket because he is yeah. having the supreme power he is having more power than anyone so some corruption may happen in the case of centralized system or some human having more power than others or that human he is controlling the system or a human or an organization is controlling in the case of uh, facebook zuckerberg may be the supreme power if he wish he can do something uh, more on this system okay so that is called a centralized it is said it is a uh, it is all things are concentrated to a centralized authority or they are controlling the system but in the case of blockchain no such centralized authority is there that is the main advantage it is decentralized authority is distributed to all other all equal nodes it is distributed the middleman is eliminated there is no middleman another example i can give one example suppose 
um, here this this person uh, he wants to transfer a 10000 rupees to this person in us this person in EU, india and this person is in us this person want to transfer 10000 indian rupees so he can't do it by himself he need definitely he need to approach a third person the current scenario he need, definitely he need to approach a third person the third person may be a, a financial institution like an exchange or something or bank or anything he need to definitely go and approach this uh, exchange suppose the, there may be some exchanges there so this exchange is the centralized authority for this transaction or controlling this transaction so he gives his 10,000 rupees to this exchange. This exchange then convert Indian rupees to uh, US dollar or something and then uh, transfer to this person. So his money, he want to transfer this person. He need to approach a third person. This is called, uh, this is the working of a centralized system. We need to approach a centralized person my money i am having 10000 my money i am going to transfer some of my friend in between some middle money is there and not only that we need to pay some commission to him right in order to do this transaction yes, so this is called a yes and rise. i am doing some transaction in between some middleman and beyond we need to pay some service charges and this transaction may be it is taking some time as well anyway it will take uh, one it will take you some time, one day or two days. Minimum that much of time is required to complete this transaction. So this is called a centralized approach. This is called a centralized approach. But in the case of blockchain, blockchain is completely decentralized. No third person is there. No middleman is there. Suppose I am having some cryptocurrency. I am having 10 BTC. This person having some BTC and he want to transfer that BTC to this person in U US. The same scenario. This person is in India. This person is in US. He is having 10, the, 10 BTC instead of Indian rupee. Indian rupee is controlled by RBI and some centralized authority. So this person is having some BTC, Bitcoin. He want to transfer him. So he can directly deposit to this person's account without any intermediary this is called a blockchain this is called a blockchain transaction there is no middleman is there there is no middleman he can directly do all the transaction or nobody is controlling nobody is controlling so this is called a block or decentralized no middleman is there suppose um, the, so this person uh, receives uh, 10 BTC. So anybody in the network can able to receive the money without uh, anyone's permission. But in our traditional system, if I want to receive some money, first of all, I need to create an account. In order to create an account, I definitely go and approach the bank. We need to submit our identity card and all other things, address proof, everything we need to submit. Then only we will get some account or uh, account number. Without account number, you can't receive the money. So the one middleman is controlling the entire transaction as well. That is the banking scenario. Here, in order to receive the money, we no need to approach anybody. Anybody can deposit money to anybody's wallet. That is called a decentralized. So blockchain is decentralized and distributed. Decentralized and distributed. So this is the basic definition of blockchain. Okay, is it clear? Okay, actually, uh, who who created this blockchain? Actually, this uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. In two thousand eight or six, I. Uh, I think it is two thousand four, right? Okay, mm -hmm. he uh, released one white paper on this Bitcoin uh, peer to peer transaction. If the uh, if you get the time, you just go and read this one. Satoshi Nakamoto's okay, white paper on bitcoin okay. now uh, we will see how the blockchain network is look like so blockchain is a decentralized distributed decentralized and distributed it is something like this okay so so many nodes are there 
uh, here only shows uh, only six nodes in the real scenario then uh, there are likes of likes of nodes may be there in the blockchain network and all nodes storing the data right each and every nodes to having uh, the data that is called a distributed distributed uh, thing so here how the data are stored in this node node means just imagine it is a block uh, it is a computer so each and every node we are storing the data how we are storing the data on the blockchain network it is how it is in the form of blockchain it is called a distributed decentralized system in this distributed distributed decentralized system there are different nodes are there each and every node we are how to store the data how we are going to store the data the data is stored in the form of blockchain so this node contains the blockchain this node contains the blockchain this node contains the blockchain or we can say each and every node in the network contains the blockchain complete blockchain and even after somebody else is adding the da new data to one of the node then the blockchain uh, added that data as well that data is synchronized with the, all the nodes so at any point of time at any point of time in all the nodes having the same data here okay here see uh, this is how the blockchain looks like it is blockchain means it is a chain of block this is a, a blockchain this is how the blockchain network looks like blockchain looks like not blockchain network blockchain looks like something like this the word itself it is a chain of block chain block block chain so blockchain is simply looks like like uh, something like this so here one two three four blocks are there one two three four blocks are there and uh, these four blocks are linked together or chained each other these blocks are chained each other to form a blockchain so i can show you how the blockchain network is actually something like see here six nodes are there right one two three four five six nodes are there no centralized server is there six nodes are there participating in this blockchain network and uh, each node contains the blockchain each node the first node contains the complete copy of the blockchain or completed data in this structure we are storing the data so that uh, structure we are calling it as blockchain so this node contains the blockchain this node contains the blockchain each and every node contains the blockchain and uh, suppose after some time alice wants to send uh, some btc to bob okay alice and bob are sending some transactions some btc that is called a transaction and uh, th that is called a one data or he is sending some data to the blockchain so he send a new data to submit to this node and this node will create a new block at the end of this blockchain one two three blocks are there now new transaction has happened so new block will be created so one two three four blocks are there in this node and at the same time this new version of the blockchain is distributed to or synchronized with all other nodes so at any point of time at any point of time all the nodes having the same copy of the blockchain at the, any point of time all the nodes having the same copy of the blockchain okay so this is called a uh, blockchain network this is called a blockchain network now we are going to see how this blockchain looks like so remember only one thing uh, till now all the node having the same copy of the blockchain all the node having the same copy of the blockchain or we already uh, see this one right all data is distributed to all the nodes not all of the data it is distributed to all the nodes that is called a distributed so if this node is having some data that it should be distributed to all other nodes all the nodes having same copy of the data that is distributed so how data is stored is in the form of blockchain in the form of blockchain so this is how the blockchain looks like so one two three blocks are there one two three blocks are there so i have taken the blockchain so this is the uh, the structure of a blockchain 
here one two three four blocks are there four blocks are there and the four blocks are linked each other four blocks are linked each other one two three four blocks are linked each other this is called a block chain one two three four blocks they are linked each other and this blockchain is stored in one node same blockchain is stored on the second node same blockchain is stored in the fourth, third fourth and fifth and sixth six node may be there in the uh, uh, picture that just shown uh, over here so all the node we are storing the same copy of the blockchain so blockchain contains now it is four blocks okay so this is called the a basic structure the skeleton we can say it is a skeleton of a blockchain okay one two three four blocks so see one this is the first block first block this is the second block third block and fourth block okay now you just see okay now what will happen is suppose you want to do some transactions on the blockchain suppose you want to store some data on the blockchain then what will happen this data will be stored in a new block a new block will be created over there and uh, this block will be chained to the existing blockchain now one two three four blocks are there then now one more block will be created they are chained to the existing blockchain now the block chain size will be five five blocks are there and these five blocks will be there in each and every node now here is only three blocks after after 10 minutes suppose in the case of bitcoin every 10 minutes a new block will be created one two three blocks are there now after 10 minutes during the 10 minutes so many transactions are happening in the bitcoin blockchain so many persons are transferring bitcoins uh, in all over the world so in every 10 minutes all the transactions are grouped together to form a new block all the data happened during the 10 minutes it is captured all together to create a new block and this new block will be appended to the existing blockchain so one two three block was there previously now the fourth block is added to the existing blockchain now one two three four block so this node contain four blocks so the same version of the blockchain is distributed to all other nodes because they are interconnected. This is how the blockchain network uh, blockchain is working. This is how blockchain is working. The data are stored in a blockchain in the form of block. Blockchain contains different different no, uh, blocks. Blockchain contains different different blocks, and each block contains the data. And in the case of Bitcoin blockchain, every 10 minutes, new block will be created. Every 10 minutes, new block will be created. Okay, clear? Okay, I can I can show a real scenario as well when it will be clear. See, Bitcoin Explorer. Go to this Bitcoin Explorer. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin Explorer. Okay. See, uh, this is the transactions are happening. Okay, now time is 10 55 20. Uh, this person transferring this. Uh, see, every every second it is happening so much of transactions. Okay. So this person yes, transferred uh, this much of BTC to somebody else. Okay, so every second so many transactions are happening. So what will happen is, it is all over the world, right? So 55, 45, okay, every millisecond, I think every millisecond some transactions are happening in the Bitcoin. So here, where is the Explorer? yeah here it is okay here latest block see this one so these are the transactions are happening every second okay now this second uh, so many transactions are happened this person this account number transferred some 
1.8 BTC to somebody else, 0.07 BTC has transferred to somebody else. So in the so many uh, every second it is uh, some transactions are happening. In the Bitcoin blockchain, what it happens is every 10 minutes it is taken all the transactions, all the transactions has taken, and it will create a new block. It will create a new block, and uh, see now uh, seven like fifty nine nine one three blocks are there. Okay, so here now one two three block is shown over here in the Bitcoin blockchain. How many blocks are there currently? Uh, October twenty third. Uh, current the block size is 59913. You can see after uh, 5 or 10 minutes, uh, one more block may be created. So the new block may be created. You can see over here. New block will be created. Okay, see 913 has been created. Or, uh, okay, 6 minutes before. So 911, it is created 20 minutes before, 28 minutes before. Uh, 912. It is created 12 minutes ago. That is around 10 minutes gap is there to create a new block. And the 913 is created 6 minutes ago. So you just go and see after 6 minutes, you can see 914 block will be created. So this is uh, in the case of, yeah. This is the blockchain. This is a blockchain uh, pictorically uh, shown over here. This is 912. This is the block. This block is 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now 13, 913. 913 block is 5 like, 7 like, 59913. Uh, that block is there. Now so many transactions are happening. You can see in the home page. So all the transaction is uh, grouped after 10 minutes and it will create a new one more block over there. So this process is continuous. This process is continuous. This is called a uh, blockchain. This is called a blockchain. So these are the blocks. So this is called a blockchain. This pictorical representation we can call it as a blockchain. So after 10 minutes, new block will be created. Then again, after 10 minutes, new more block will be created. So every 10 minutes, approximately new block will be created in the case of Bitcoin. This is the Bitcoin. And inside one block, you can see so many transactions are there. Okay, so this is 913 block. If you click over here, you can see so many transactions. Yeah, see, these are the different transactions on that block. These are the different transactions. 9133. So these are the information about that block. Uh, 59913. This is the details of that block. Hash value is this one. Uh, input is this one. So many informations are there. Minor node is this one. Difficulty level is there. This is the difficulty level. Size is this is uh, this much of byte. So these are the some information about that block so okay 913 this is 912 block if you click here just a previous block okay uh, this is the uh, details of that block this is a uh, new new block are creating at uh, every 10 minutes okay this are... so this is uh, so this block is stored in okay where it is the this is the blockchain network this blockchain is completely stored in one node that may be in us and uh, this entire copy of the blockchain will be stored in another node in some other country or uh, sri lanka some other country all the node having the entire copy of this blockchain entire blockchain that is five like seven like fifty nine thousand uh nine one three this is the this much number of blocks are there in the blockchain network, Bitcoin blockchain. So if you want to have your machine as a node, you can also uh, set your uh, machine as a uh, node. Okay, you can also set your machine as a one of the node in the blockchain. So what you need to do is you need to store all the blocks in this blockchain network. You need to store all the blocks in the blockchain network.
so this is uh, the blockchain network okay so one to now we are going to see what is inside one block this is the blockchain so it contains so many blocks 913 912 911 and so many blocks are there now we are going to see what is inside each block. Okay, what is inside each block? Okay, clear. So uh, now we will see what all are the things inside a block. So in the blockchain, we are having so many blocks are there. These blocks are uh, contain, uh, connected each other, and uh, this is called a blockchain, a chain of block, or a collection of blocks. That is called a blockchain. So what all are the things in this is called a blockchain. So collection of blocks, one, two, three different blocks are there. Uh, in the blockchain network, uh, so many blocks. Okay. During that time, okay, we can see whether that uh, 914th block has been created. Yeah, this much of block has been created. 916. Yeah. And previously 913 was there. 914 here created. Okay, this is created so soon. Okay, now the blockchain size is 917. Okay, nine one minute before it has been created. So, in a block, these are the different information. This is a blockchain. So different blocks are there. And these are the information inside a block. These are the information inside a block. So inside the block, we are storing the data. So we are storing the data inside the block in the body portion. Here we are storing all the data, uh, like uh, transactions, like transactions. For example, suppose you are and sending one BTC to some other person. The transaction will be recorded over here. So uh, some uh, that means all the transaction that is happened during the last 10 minutes or from the transaction pool, it has been taken and restored. It is created a new block, something like this. So, so many transactions will be there. Or if you want to store some of your details, your name, address, and phone number, all those things, uh, that all those things will be stored in the body portion or over here inside the block we inside the block there is two portions are there header and the body in the body portion we are storing all the data and the header is nothing but some information about that block that is the header header contains the information about the block and the body portion we are storing the data or the transaction so every 10 minutes all the transaction or all the data in the blockchain are grouped together to form a block. So the data will be in the body portion and there's some information about that block, when that block has been created, who created, all those things are stored in the header portion as well. So this is the complete structure of a block. Complete structure of a block. So there will be a timestamp will be there, nodes will be there, root hash and the previous hash will be there. These are the different uh, uh, different items in the header portion and uh, the body portion we are storing the data here we are storing all the data and uh, in the header portion we are having this much of information timestamp nouns root hash and the previous hash so timestamp is nothing but timestamp is nothing but when the block has been created that information will be stored in timestamp field when the block has been created that information will be stored in the timestamp. And uh, uh, root hash is there. Root hash is nothing but, uh, do you heard about the hashing? What do you mean by hashing? Okay, well, first of all, we will see what is hashing is. Hashing is nothing but, uh, suppose if you want to send some messages or anything, you there is a hash function is there. The hash function convert that message to something else okay some uh, other format that is called a hashing for example uh, here in the blockchain they are all are using sha 256 algorithm sha 256 hashing okay so 
Okay, suppose uh, if you want to store, if you, the hash value of Q is this one. Q is the original message. Hash value of Q is this one. If you, you also do the same on the, this algorithm, you will get also the same answer. Okay, you will, this is how the hashing is calculated. But from here, from this hash value, you cannot identify that it is a hash of Q. It is very difficult to, the reverse process is very difficult or impossible. It is not at all possible. Suppose uh, my name is uh, Prince, hash value of Prince is this one. If you given this value to somebody else, he nobody can uh, decrypt by it. Nobody can. It is Prince. Okay, so if I am giving this message to you, nobody can identify it is Prince. So it is a hash value. It is a hash value. From the hash value, the original message checking is very, very difficult. But it is used for uh, integrity checking. Integrity checking. Suppose I am sending a message of prints. Okay, message of prints to uh, some other person. Um, or hello, how are you? I am sending this message. Hello, how are you? This message I am sending. So the hash value of this message is this one. Hash value of this message is this one. In between, and this message is uh, sending through WhatsApp or Instagram or some other means. So this message is going through the internet and any hacker can change in the internet. That message can be changed. Change. And the hash value, the original message, the hash value is sent down with the 83. Here it is, changed. it is 83, you can see. Or in between, somebody else changed it to Y. Then see the hash value is entirely different. Hash value is changed. So this hashing is used to check whether the message integrity. If anybody changed the hash value, if anybody is changing the hash value, that is the usage of this hash value. Integrity check. Okay, clear. Okay, can you send to me the hash value of your name through chat? You can use uh, this link to create the hash value. So this is how the hash value is uh, taken. So hash value is used to uh, check the integrity. Actually checking the integrity that is the hash, uh, that is the use of this hash value. Okay, now, now we come to our, uh, uh, what all are the things inside a block? What all are the things inside a block? So inside the block, there is uh, a header and the body portions are there in the body portion. Uh, so many transactions are there in the header portion. Timestamp is there. Timestamp is nothing but what all are the things. When this block has been created, that information will be stored in the timestamp field. And the root hash is very important. Root hash is nothing but a hash of uh, the entire uh, transaction. That is called the trans, uh, root hash. We are hashing, we are hashing the this data okay here you can see n transactions are there we are hashed together this n transactions we are hashed together you will get a hash value something like here uh, you will get a hash value something like this. okay you will get a hash value uh, so there are n number of transactions suppose uh, transaction tr1 is the first transaction tr2 is another transaction tr3 is another transaction so, so many transactions are here in this block. So many transactions are there in this block. One, two, three, n number of transactions are there. And these transactions are hashed together. These n transactions are hashed together, something like this. n transactions are hashed together. You will get a hash value, something like this. This hash value will be stored on the root hash. So this is used. If anybody is changing this transaction, we can easily identify some transaction. The values, value stored on this field has been changed by somebody else. We can easily check whether somebody is changing these values. That is why we are using this root hash. 
so the transactions are there n number of different transactions of different data are there and uh, we are having the hash value of this uh, transaction and we are storing some values like a hello and uh, uh, world we are storing some other uh, value something like that so in this block we are having this much of transaction or this much of data we are hashing this thing and you are getting this hash value and we are storing the hash value over here we are storing the hash value in the root hash so in the block we are having we are having transactions and the hash value of the transaction in the root hash so after the block has been created if somebody changes this hash value is already the 801 okay you can see the hash value is 801 that is stored over here and after some time some hacker changed some value this hello to uh, hello t then you see the hash value this transaction and this root hash value is there is a mismatch so we can easily identify that somebody has changed the value so that is called uh, that is uh, we can check whether some some changes has happened or not that is why we are using this root hash root hash root hash is nothing but hash of this transaction hash of this transaction so this is our uh, previously this hello was there so this is the root hash hash of the transaction hash of the transaction is stored on the root hash and uh, nonce value okay nonce value is used by the minus okay we will see uh, how this uh, it is just a random number it is something like a random number and uh, this nonce value is calculated by the minor node who is doing the mining process of the block uh, blockchain so we will discuss uh, what is nonce value, nonce value in the later so nonce is used by the minor node okay so timestamp root hash and the previous hash is very important Okay. okay, we will see what is previous hash. Uh, so, when a blockchain is Ethereum or uh, Bitcoin blockchain has created in 2004 or 2015, Ethereum is in 2014, I think, and the Bitcoin is 2004 or 2005. So, only zero to block is there. First block is there. Only the first block. And uh, that block is called the Genesis block. Till now, a fresh uh, new blockchain has been created. Till now, no transaction has been uh, done on that blockchain. So only one block is there. That is called the Genesis block. You can see this is called the Genesis block. And uh, this Genesis block don't have any previous block. Or the first block in the blockchain is called the Genesis block. And after some time, after 10 minutes, some transactions have happened in the blockchain and it will create a new block it will create a new block this is block number one or block number two and after 10 minutes new block has been created then new block has been created and so every 10 minutes it is new block has been created and now it is a block that is seven like a 59 000 or something so this is how the genesis block is the first block in the blockchain and each and every block this is the first block every block has some information some data will be there some transaction this block has some data has been there and there's some header portion at what time this timestamp is there root hash is there nonce value is there previous hash is there and after 10 minutes this block number three has been created with some transaction also this transaction will be there in the block as well as some information regarding this block when this block has been created that is timestamp root hash previous uh, root hash previous hash and a nonce value this is the structure of a block this is the structure of each and every block and the first block is called a genesis block okay now see and uh, we will see we, we didn't see what we mean by uh, so this is block number 10 okay zero to block or first block genesis block then one first block second block third block fifth and so many blocks are there in between block number 10 block number 11 block number 12 okay i am taking only three blocks block number 10 uh, previously some blocks are there after block number 12 so many blocks are there uh, till five like uh, seven like blocks are there uh, so 
in between uh, block number 10, 11, 12 become taken. And in block number 10, you can see a timestamp is there. You know at what time this block number 10 has been created. That information is there in the timestamp. And your root hash is also there. Root hash is nothing but the hash value of this uh, this block, uh, this uh, transaction. That is root hash or the data. Hash value of the data in this block. That is root hash. And the previous hash. Okay, see, the previous hash is very, very important in the blockchain. The very, very important thing is previous hash. So, previous hash is nothing but hash value of the previous block. That is the previous hash. So, consider block number 11. Consider block number 11. Block number 11 having, there is a field called the previous hash. Every block has this structure. Every block has previous hash field. In the previous hash field, what we are storing is in block number 11, there is a previous hash field is there. Here we are storing the hash value of block number 10. Block number 10 is hashed together. Hash of this block number 10 is taken and stored over the previous hash field of block number 11. So why we are storing this uh, previous hash field is what is the purpose of uh, this? Uh, what it is? Uh, hashing is this one. If any small changes in the data will easily get identified. So what we have done is block number 10 is there. Hash value of block number 10 is stored in block number 11. Or in block number 11, we are storing previous blocks hash value. Block number 10's hash value is stored over here. And similarly, block number 12. See block number 12. Block number 12 also having the previous hash field. So hash value of block number 11 will be stored on block number 12. Hash value of the previous block. That is the previous hash. Okay. So block consider block number 11. Block number 11 having this much of field. Block number 11 having hash uh, some data in the transactions. And uh, root hash. What is root hash of block number 11 root hash here root hash is nothing but the data in this transaction or some transactions are there in the block number 11 that transactions are hashed together and stored in the root hash field and the timestamp of block i am talking about block number 11 and the timestamp in block number 11 there is a timestamp field in the timestamp field time at which the block number 11 has been created at what time this block has been block number 11 has been created that information over here and what is nodes nodes is a random number that value is uh, set or updated by the minor node of block number 11 minor of block number 11 and what about the previous hash previous hash is nothing related to the block number 11 it is stored block number 11 having a previous hash field. Here we are storing the hash value of block number, the previous hash, okay, previous uh, block. That is block, block number 10. 10. Hash value. Yeah, yeah, hash value of block 10 will be stored on the previous hash field of block number 11. This is how the block is forms a chain. One block is linked to another block, right? Uh, each and every block is not independent. They are linked together. This is how it is linked. Block number 11 is linked with the block number 10. Block number 11 is linked with the block number 10. Uh, why? Because block number 10's value is stored in block number 11. And the block number 12 is appended to block number 11. Block number 12 is new block. It is appended to block number 11 or linked with link there is a link is something like in block number 12 we are storing the hash value of block number 11 so this is how the linking or chaining between the blocks is happening it is with the previous hash field it is with the previous hash field this is the most important thing in the blockchain okay suppose one last question suppose i am having a super computer or very high computer computing power machine what i did is I, anyway, I need to update block number 10. Okay, here my balance is uh, 10. 
I am updated 10,000 uh, over here, block number 10, so that I need to update the root hash. So block number 10 changed means I need definitely need to change the block number 11. Block number 11 also changed, the 12 also changed, until the end of the block. Anyway, I have changed, suppose. What will happen? In this scenario, suppose now this blockchain is completely uh, valid blockchain. Okay, no link is invalid because I am changing the entire block. Entire block from starting from block number 10. Suppose I have, so the entire thing I have updated. Now also, it is can be detected because see this one. I am updated on this blockchain, right? This this node having this blockchain i am going to this nodes block number 10 11 13 14 and uh, this file like block i have updated on this node but so yes. millions of uh, thousands and thousands of nodes are there with the valid blockchain the original blockchain only this yes. node contain invalid blockchain so this block yes. is getting this node getting invalidated even if you change the entire block, then also it won't work because the original data is stored in each and every node. So there is no way to update the values in the blockchain. There is no way. Nobody can. Nobody no, can. Yes, so yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is immutable, completely immutable. Okay, now we will uh, have some little exercise. Okay, go to, okay, okay you are using mobile phone no issues so there are different types of blockchains and they are like a bitcoin blockchain uh, ethereum blockchain and all those things go to okay previously we have seen this uh, bitcoin explorer now we can go to ethereum explorer ethereum is also a public blockchain ethereum explorer either scan.io okay this is the website Okay, this is the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum blockchain 10, uh, every, uh, in Ethereum, there is an advantage like uh, every 10 seconds, new block has been created. Every 10 minutes, every 10 seconds. Here, you can see the current block is, uh, this is, I think uh, 15 crore or one crore, I don't know exactly. Uh, so uh, just uh, 22 seconds ago, new block is created, 34 seconds ago. So it is uh, just uh, 10 second gap, it is creating new block in the case of ethereum and every block suppose this block taking this block we are having so many information right block number timestamp what is the timestamp october 23 2022 6 15 a.m utc the time uh, time zone may be different so october 23 this time this block has been created okay this block has been created and uh, this block under how many transactions each block, each block has, uh, each and every block has this much of information, right? Okay, these are the information. Timestamp. So I am checking the block number, this block, the latest block. This block uh, having this much of transaction, 137 transaction. So transaction 1, 2, 3, etc. 137 transactions are there in this block. And uh, Okay, again, let's use okay, we can see some other information. Okay, hash of this block is this one. This is the previous hash. Okay, this is the previous hash. Hash of the previous block. Hash of the previous block is this one. That is one nine five eight hash value is this one. Hash of the previous hash field. There is a previous hash field is there. So previous hash field is this one. Hash of the previous block. State root is nothing but the uh, root hash. Hash of this 137 transaction. Here 137 transactions are there. 137 transactions are there. So hash of that transaction is this one. And uh, there is a nonce value is there. Nonce of this one is this one. It is, I think it is not updated. So these are the different uh, uh, information in this block. Go to another block go to another block you can see some other block as well you can see some other block 
uh, this is uh, 956 block this block also having other information 119 blocks and so many informations you can see okay see these are the different information and a fee recipient you can see it is a fee recipient it is a minor node uh, who mine this block who mine this block or who uh, find out or setting up the nonce value we will see in the mining process in the coming sessions so this is the minor node if you click on this see this is the minor node okay this may be some person see what is the balance he is having okay only one Mm, only he is having only one either one point one his balance is one point one four six his balance is only this so if you have uh, any ethereum account you just uh, search your ethereum address over here you can see the complete information about your address what is your balance what all are the transaction you have done everything will be there that means blockchain is completely transparent blockchain is completely transparent anybody can see any transaction so here you can see how many transactions in this block all the transactions you can see in this particular block this many transactions are there if you click on this one you can see uh, this is the either scan this is the either scan either scan i am going to give one block okay see okay some questions you just uh, try to find out okay i'm going to this is the block okay four so how many transactions are there in this block can you check how many transactions are there in the block this is the block number this is the block number how many transactions are there in the block go to this either scan either scan dot io the link is given here you can search the block number block number is given on the chart how many transactions search something like this and check them out. oh this block so has been created five minutes ago okay how many transactions it is having uh 45 transactions 45 transactions are there our root hash is this one and the parent hash previous hash is ebf this is yes. the parent hash and you check what is the hash value of uh, what is the hash value of this one what is the what will be the hash value of this one this block hash value of this block is stored in the previous hash of this block so previous hash of uh, this block is this one. So definitely this is the hash value of 973. This block hash value is definitely this one. So 974, so it has a previous hash. And then the minor node is this one. Minor node. The mind, the person who mined is this one. You just click over here. You can see. He is having 0.71 either, 0.71 either. That the hash value is, where is this hash value? Mm, state to uh, hash value. Okay, it is uh, which block? It is 974. A hash value you just check the hash value for 973 it is a x e 
C it is start with the 0x e 0 7 or something Before. right so that is a hash value of uh, 73 that hash value is stored yes. in 974 as well something like this okay. See, this is the hash value so the previous hash block hash uh, previous block hash value is stored on the very next block it is formed like a chain So these are the main advantages of uh, this uh, blockchain. Blockchain is completely uh, distributed, decentralized. Distributed means data is distributed. Decentralized means nobody is controlling the system. It is completely decentralized. And uh, it is immutable. That is the main advantage, immutable. Once data is stored on the blockchain, so nobody can able to erase the data, erase or modify the data. Completely immutable, immutable. That is blockchain. And uh, it is uh, 24 by 7, it is available because one of the one or two nodes is failing means nothing happened to the system uh, because the data is available, rest of the nodes. And uh, it is transparent as well. This blockchain is completely transparent. All the transactions are transparent. You can see in the user scan, go to this user scan, go to the transaction, and you can see the complete information. It is completely transparent. Okay. Now we are coming to um, how the block is added to the blockchain, okay, or the mining process. So this is the blockchain network. Actually, this is the blockchain network. And uh, in the case of uh, Bitcoin blockchain, what it happens is every 10 minutes, new block is getting added. Uh, so each and every time, every 10 minutes, new block is getting added. This is because uh, what happens is uh, every 10 minutes, lot of transactions are happen. All the transactions during the 10 minutes are grouped together and it will create a new block. And a new block will be there. And uh, this block, newly created block, will be distributed to each and every node. Each and every node. And till now, it is not added to the blockchain. Okay, the block is not added to the blockchain. New block is are no new block is created, but current blockchain is one, two, three block, and a new block is there. New block is there. Till now, it is not added. And out of this uh, six nodes, you can see six nodes are there. Out of these six nodes one node is going to add this newly created block to the blockchain. One node is going to add the newly created block to the blockchain. So how will you select the node for adding this node block to the blockchain? Out of six blocks are uh, six nodes are there, we need to select one node to add the block into the blockchain. Okay, that is the situation. The, for this purpose, what we are going to do is we have, because all the node having the same priority, no one is better than others. All the node having the same priority. And there is no server is there or no centralized authority is there. All are having equal priority. How we are going to select a particular node? That is a problem. Uh, if it is a centralized approach, means the centralized server or the centralized person can add the new block. He no need to ask others because he is having the supreme power. He can take the decision. But in this situation, uh, six nodes are there. All are having equal priority. Nobody is controlling them. And how we are going to select a particular node out of which six nodes? For example, in a classroom, there are... Uh, six or 30 students are there in a classroom six 30 students are there how we are going to select a uh, leader from this all are having equal uh, equal uh, priority right nobody is better than others so in order to select a, a leader or something uh, first approach may be uh, election can be conducted or uh, second one is uh, we can give a puzzle to them. The person who, the student who solved the puzzle first, he may be the brilliant node other, compared to other, and he can be the leader. 
so different approaches we can select to select a leader from a classroom the same thing we can approach over here here six nodes are there all are having equal priority no centralized person is controlling so we need to select a particular node we need to select a particular node out of uh, this one so what will what we will do is there is a consensus algorithm is there consensus algorithm is there this consensus algorithm is used to select a node out of which the six nodes we need to select a particular node and that node is going to add a newly created block to the blockchain anyway we need to select a particular node in order to select a node we are going we have different approaches are there these approaches is called the consensus algorithm consensus algorithm one of the consensus algorithm is proof of work algorithm okay one of them is proof of work another consensus and bitcoin and uh, ethereum was previously used to consensus uh, proof of work algorithm and uh, next algorithm is uh, uh, proof of stake algorithm and ethereum is currently moved to proof of stake and some other blockchain network is also using proof of stake and the proof of elapsed time is there proof of burn is there different consensus algorithms are there so this consensus algorithm is used to select a particular node from out of this different nodes this is consensus algorithm actually so there is a first consensus algorithm is a proof of work pow proof of work that is the first consensus so consensus algorithm actually used to select a particular node so and this selected node is called a minor node that is selected node is not called a minor node okay this is the scenario suppose there are different nodes it is distributed all over the world this is the second node third node fourth node fifth six seven eight and nine okay suppose 10 and all those things this is the blockchain network these are the different nodes all are having equal priority we need to find one particular node out of this all nodes there are thousands and thousands of nodes all over the world in the blockchain network and we need to select only one node out of which all the nodes so for that purpose we are using this proof of uh, work consensus algorithm now we are going to see how this proof of work consensus algorithm works so in the proof of work consensus algorithm what we are going to do is uh, we are giving a puzzle to this nodes okay a puzzle to this block uh, this nodes a puzzle and uh, the person who solved the puzzle first okay the person who solved the puzzle the person who solved the puzzle first uh, we selected as a minor node give a puzzle to them these uh, blocks all the uh, not the blocks not uh, nodes okay uh, give a puzzle to the nodes and uh, the node who solved the puzzle first he will be the winner node or the minor node. He will be elected as a minor node. And uh, the minor node is able to add new block to the blockchain. Every 10 minutes, new block will be there in the blockchain. And the block is there, but till now it is not, uh, not added. In order to add this block to the blockchain, we need to have a minor node. So first of all, we need to select a minor node. In order to select a minor node, the node is given by a puzzle, and uh, the node who solved the puzzle first will be selected as the minor node, and he is going to add this newly created block to the blockchain. Okay, this is the process in the proof of work consensus algorithm. This is the process in proof of work okay got uh, any any uh, questions okay now how this uh, proof of work consensus algorithm work the proof of work consensus algorithm is actually consensus mechanism to find out the nodes okay how this uh, suppose 
uh, this is the current blockchain is okay this is a situation this is a, this much of block nodes are there and every node having the complete copy of the blockchain suppose this is this is the newly created block okay this is the newly created block this block is not added to the blockchain this is the newly created block can you tell me what all are the uh, items in this blockchain uh, in this particular block what all are the different fields in this block so here so how many different fields are there first one is timestamp okay so first one is a timestamp is there so suppose the timestamp value is okay now oh, sunday timestamp value is suppose one two three four five six suppose this is the timestamp value this time the block has been created okay assume this is the timestamp value then uh, what may be the next value next field timestamp uh, root cards right root cards is this one okay suppose this one a b c three four five a b c uh timestamp root hash and the previous hash also this is so previous hash is suppose uh what a b c four five six seven b c a suppose the uh, this is the previous hash so timestamp root hash previous hash and the nonce value is also there am i right uh, we didn't discuss about what is the nonce value okay we discussed the only up to this point what is timestamp previous hash and the root hash so here one nonce value is also there in the block but whenever a new block is created the block contains all the transaction will be there and the root hash will be there timestamp will be there and the previous hash also will be there and this nonce value is missing okay we don't know what is the nonce value so we do, uh, so th this is how the new block is there in the blockchain without a nonce value a new block has been created and uh, we know that we need to select a particular node out of which all the node by using a puzzle or something and that by solving a puzzle okay so uh, we need to find a single node a single node out of which it is thousands of nodes to add this block to the blockchain so in order to select a particular node what we will do we are going to give a puzzle so the puzzle is nothing but find the nonce value find the nonce value in this here okay here uh, one field is missing out of which all the things are there here all the things are there we don't know what is the here here we don't know what is the nonce value here we don't know what is the nonce value so the puzzle is simple the puzzle is very simple find the nonce value in this block find the nonce value in this block that is the puzzle so every node is trying to find a nonce value the node who find the nonce value first he will be the winner node. One of the node we may be finding the nodes value first. He will be the winning node and he will be the minor node. And what is his responsibility? The responsibility of the minor node is nothing but add this newly created block to the blockchain. So he found the nodes value. So the block is fully uh, validated block because the nodes value is also there. So he can add this block to the existing blockchain. This is the process. This is the process. So finding the nodes value is the puzzle. Finding the nodes value is the puzzle. So in the block, we are having timestamp, previous hash, and the root hash. Nodes value is only the missing part. Nodes value is the missing part. Okay, finding the nodes value is the 
passing. Okay, clear? Finding the nonce value. Now we are going to see how to find the nonce value. How will you find the nonce value? Okay, how to find the nonce value? The nonce value is uh, okay. How to find the nonce value? That is the uh, case. That is a possibility. Okay, finding the nonce value. So, oh, we are having this much of values over here. Okay, this much of values. Timestamp is there. Root hash is there. Previous hash is there, and the timestamp is not there. We need to find the time uh, nonce. Find the nonce value. Uh, find the uh, find the nonce value such a way that hash of this entire thing, hash of this entire thing, entire thing means a timestamp, previous hash, root hash, and nonce. Hash of this entire thing should be less than or equal to a particular value. Should be, should be less than or equal to a particular value. Or I can say, okay, or should be less than the difficulty level. Okay, this is the percent. Okay, hash of this entire thing, hash of this block, hash of this block, including this nonce value should be less than or equal to a particular difficulty level. For example, once I will do an example, it will be clear, otherwise it will be very difficult to understand. So uh, we are having this one, right? What we need, the hash value is missing. Okay, hash is missing. Hash of this entire thing, hash of this, all those things, include, we, but we don't know the nonce value. But we don't know the hash. What we need to do is, we need to hash of this entire thing. Hash of this entire thing, but the nonce value, we don't know. Here. Yeah. Including the nonce value, including the nonce value. That nonce value is missing here. Okay, hash of this and their thing should start with. I can say should start with a yes, zero. Okay, yes. that is my puzzle. And uh, remaining whatever it is fine. Okay, this is the puzzle I am giving. So this is the puzzle. Okay, uh, so this is the puzzle. Hash of this and there. But in we knows what is the time. This is a newly created block. This mean by seeing this newly created block, we can get the timestamp we are getting. Previous hash is also there, and the root hash is also there. So we got this value, but only the missing value is the nonce value. So we need to find this nonce value such a way that hash of this entire thing, hash of this entire thing should be start with the zero. Okay, this is the path. Okay, so this is the hash value. Now we can we try to solve this. Every node try to solve this puzzle. Every node, each and every node tries to solve this puzzle. And the node who find the solution first, he will be the winner or the minor node. Okay, so now we are going to solve in the real scenario how to solve this. This is the way to how to find the hash value. Okay. So we know that the timestamp uh, is one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the timestamp. And uh, previous hash, root hash is this one, A, B, C, uh, some, this number, and A, B, C, this is the previous hash. And uh, root hash is again A, B, C, uh, five, six, seven, or something, and B, C, A. This is the thing. But, we need to and what is the hash value of uh, this one hash value of this one is this is the hash value but we need to find here something is missing here the nonce value is missing so we need to do some trial and error method to find the nonce value so all the node is trying to find the nonce value all the nodes so suppose i am a node i am also trying to find the nonce value Suppose I am starting with the value 1 and checking the first digit. Okay, our puzzle is something like this. It should start with the 0. That is my puzzle. That is a puzzle. So it is now, it is not started with this 0. It should start with the 0. We need to find a 
nonce value such a way that it should start with a zero. Uh, so one is not the nonce value. So then I am trying with the two. Now also I am not get the correct answer. Then I tried with the three. No, it is not the value. Then try with the four. No. Say five. No. Six. No. Okay. Seven. No. Eight. No. Nine. No. Ten. No. Or I can do with the uh, hexadecimal values as well. A. No. B. No. C. No. D. No. E. I am not winning. E. F is also not not correct then one zero no uh, here we can use the hexadecimal numbers so the, uh, we need to find uh, we need to find a nonce value such a way that such a way that it should start with zero so i am trying with some of the big numbers so one zero one two three four no I am not winning. Okay. So now I am getting a zero. It should start with a zero. I am I am the winner. Okay. Now I got the answer. The hash, the nonce value is this number. Now I won the puzzle. I won the puzzle. So I got the answer. So this is the nonce value. Okay. Hash value contains only uh, the positive. Hash value is a positive number. So it is, we can say it should start with a zero. So I won the puzzle. Now our block is complete, right? My block is complete. This is the this is the timestamp, previous hash, root hash is there, nonce value is also there. Now my block is complete. I can now I am the minor node. I am the minor node. I am the winner. No, I, I have solved this puzzle first. So many nodes are there out of which I myself solved the puzzle first. I can add this block to the blockchain. I can add this newly created block to the blockchain. Now blockchain size may be uh, one previously one, two, three. This much of block may be there. Okay, this much of block may be there. This many nodes are there. This many nodes are there. New block may be uh, in between them. And uh, this may be my node. And I am adding new block to the existing blockchain. One, two, three, four blocks are there. This is a new version of the blockchain. And uh, this new version of the blockchain is distributed to all other nodes. All other nodes. And uh, they are they all are having the same copy of the blockchain. Okay. So I am the miner because I solved the puzzle first. I solved the puzzle first. How to solve this puzzle? We need to do some uh, trial and error methods right we need to do some trial and error method so currently i am doing some manual operation if it is automated and uh, per second okay per second i if i am doing too much of options i can do so too much of calculations means then my winning chance is going to high suppose i am having a supercomputer I am having a supercomputer or GPU. Then I can do so much of combination per second. I can try so much of combination per second. So which node having the high performance computer, he is able to, her, his or her winning chance is very high. His winning chance is very high. So what will be the advantage if I am doing all those things? If I am the winner or if I am the minor node, I solve the puzzle. I am adding new block to the blockchain. Anyway, I have to spend my time. I have to invest my time over there. I have to invest my electricity. I have to run a node on the blockchain. So I am doing too much of the things uh, to maintain this blockchain, to support the blockchain network. But what advantage I am getting? Without any advantage, I, I, nobody will do anything, right? Without any advantage. So uh, what the advantage is getting is, so the minor node is getting very huge rewards in the form of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin cryptocurrency.
in the bitcoin blockchain network they are getting btc bitcoins the mining node is getting bitcoins so suppose out of this node i have solved the puzzle i am elected as a miner node i am adding new block to the blockchain i am the miner so miner node is rewarded with the bitcoins current reward is around 4 bitcoin current reward is around 4 bitcoin what is the bitcoin what is the price of 1 bitcoin what uh, do you know how what is the price of current bitcoin bitcoin price bitcoin price is around uh, uh, 25 lakhs i think okay 1 bitcoin so 4 bitcoin means you will get around 1 crore rupees more than crore rupees if you are the winner means you will get this much of price so this is the uh, reward of uh, bitcoins this is the mining process okay so the advantage of the miner node is uh, getting this btcs that is advantage of this uh, miner node is get, each miner node is getting this uh, btc so around uh, as you know 10 minutes new block is getting created right every 10 minutes every 10 minutes new block is getting created and uh, there is a com and a new block is getting created and uh, there is a we need to select a miner node okay sir with the proof of with the proof of work concept consonant algorithm with the pow consonant algorithm and uh, so the so the node who solved the puzzle first he will be the miner node suppose this node solved the uh, puzzle first and the key is the winner and he can add new block to the blockchain and uh, the blockchain is 1 2 3 4 block in the blockchain current version of the blockchain and the key will distribute this newly created new version of the blockchain to all other nodes so that at any point of time every node having the same copy of the blockchain and as a reward of this one he is done so much of things right the miner node is doing so much of things uh he is uh, maintaining the blockchain network and uh, he is uh, solving the puzzle in order to solve the puzzle he need to uh, have a very computational power machine otherwise there is no chance to win you uh, because if the other machine having a very high computational power machine means super computer or gpus other machine other not having gpus and the uh, gpus and the super computer means their winning chance is high so i need to this node is uh, if i am the uh, one of the node means i am trying to be a miner means i want to compete with other nodes they are having cpu and the gpu i need to compete with them so in order to compete with them it is uh, we need to have a very high computational power machine otherwise our winning chance is very less because there is a trial and error no that no the direct algorithms are there we need to test it whether the nonce value this one or that one or that one or that one so the nonce value we are going to uh, find out okay clear so every node every node is trying to upgrade their computational power that is why every node is trying to upgrade their computational power otherwise there is a very less chance to winning the puzzle so they are trying to upgrade the computational power this is proof of work consensus goal okay uh, previously we have discussed uh, this is the okay uh, this is the uh, time stamp okay 1 2 Okay, one, two, three, uh, four, and uh, this is uh, one, two, three, um, A, B, C, and uh, A, B, C, five, six, seven, B, C, E. So this is the uh, this is the uh, field in a block, and the nonce value is missing over there. Okay, here uh, we don't know the nonce value. so what we need to do is uh, there is a this was the puzzle okay hash okay. and uh, this is the puzzle actually hash of this entire thing okay hash of this entire thing 
hash of this end here thing. Hash of this entire thing should start with a zero and the remaining whatever it is, no issues. This is our path. But I can solve with, uh, with uh, one or two seconds without any computer. I have done with the manually and I, I am able to solve this in one minute, right? Then if I am having a supercomputer or all those things, I no need for millisecond or something. I can solve it very, very fast. Because it is automated, they are doing. I am not doing manually. They are automated. All are all are having supercomputer. So it is very easy for them to uh, find this nonce value. So what the network is doing is they are increasing this uh, difficulty level. Such a way that if they are they are having the supercomputer and all those things, and then they are able to find this nonce value, they are able to find the nonce value. In less than 10 minutes, the network is increasing the difficulty level such as that. Now I found the nonce value in uh, less than 10 minutes. Anyway, I have found the nonce value in less than 10 minutes. It is not uh, desirable in the blockchain network. In the blockchain network, every block is added to the block in every 10 minutes. That is the algorithm or that is the Satoshi Nakamoto's A. So, uh, if they are the nodes are upgrading with the supercomputer or anything, they are easy to find this nodes value. If the if the puzzle is something like it is started with the only the zero, but now I increase the puzzle with the difficulty level to two. The puzzle is upgraded, and uh, now it is says that now it is says that the uh, you need to find a nonce value such a way that hash of this entire thing should be start with a zero zero. Now the difficulty level is increased. Now we need to find the hash value. Yes, sir. Okay, this is the thing. This is the value. You can also try. Okay, just try to find this nonce value. And you just try to find out uh, the hash uh, the nodes one. Okay, we suppose we all are the nodes. We all are having the new block is created with these values, uh, these values, a timestamp, previous session, all those things, and uh, this value is missing. We need to find a uh, nodes value. So we are having a competition among all the nodes. There is a tight competition because. Only the winner node is getting rewarded with the BTCs. Minor node is getting rewarded with the BTC. BTC is not simple, uh, small amount, which is around 4 BTC. 4 BTC means it is around 1 crore rupees you are getting. Indian rupee. One, more than 1 crore Indian rupee you are getting to solve the puzzle. So there is a tight competition about uh, among this all the nodes to find the nodes value. So we all are trying to find the nodes value. These are the values. Here, we need to find some nodes value such a way that it should start with 0, 0. Okay, I am not winning. Try to find.
Mm, I'm also not getting. So now it will take some time, right? Anyway, we will take uh, it will take some time. So around the 10 minutes or something it will take because of it is difficult enough. And uh, suppose you are increased your computational power with uh, too much of uh, GPU and uh, supercomputer, suppose a uh, stream of supercomputer you are having, then it is very difficult for you. You can uh, find it in seconds. Then yes. what will happen? When, then if you find the solution in seconds means what will uh, what the network do is again the difficulty level is going to increase. Again, difficulty level is increased such a way that it should start with zero zero zero. Now the difficulty level is three. Now the difficulty level is three. Okay. So at every point, at every point every node is trying to increase their computational power with the cpu gpu and all those things so in order to become a minor node we need to compete with such a type of uh, nodes okay i can show one of the node minor node okay see this is the minor node minor node minor part. it is now now the situation is something like a minor part. see this may be one notch. This much of supercomputers, this much of system. If you are having this much of computational power means it is very easy to find the nonce value, right? So we need to compete with this type of systems. So the, in each and every minor node, they are maintaining such a type of farms. Uh, so the blockchain is maintained by such a type of system. Each and every node is maintained with a, such a type of system. Uh, so the blockchain is highly, highly, highly secure, highly powered. Such a type of systems are there. So it is highly, highly secure. Nobody will able to uh, have such a type of system. That is only one node. Okay, this may be uh, one node, one node. So similarly, so many nodes are available in different different geographical locations. And they are trying to upgrade the system in day by day because uh, there is a tight competition to find the nodes one. The minor node is getting rewarded with the 4 BTC, around 1 crore rupees, more than 1 crore rupees in every 10 minutes. That is the thing. Every 10 minutes they are getting uh, more than 1 crore rupees. One crore Indian rupees. So they are trying to, it is a, not a small amount, right? So they are trying to upgrade the system. Oh, there is a tight competition. They all are trying to upgrade the systems. So blockchain is maintained by such a strong base of computers, such a strong. So that is how, you, that is why this, the blockchain is very, very highly secure. So this is the actual blockchain, blockchain network. So different blocks are there and all are interconnected and uh, every 10 minute new block is getting created and one of the node is adding new block to the blockchain depends upon the consonants algorithm one of the algorithm is proof of work what is the problem with this proof of work algorithm proof of work is uh, we need to try to solve the puzzle not to solve the puzzle uh, we need to have a very high computational power machine right okay such a like this this is the one minor it is because it takes a lot of electricity. How much of electricity it requires? So in China, that is why China has banned. There are a lot of electricity is used by these minor nodes to maintain these minor nodes. So a uh, lot of electricity is wasted. This is the main problem with this uh, proof of work consonants algorithm. Okay, in order to maintain this hardware is very difficult. And uh, power, electricity is the main thing. A lot of electricity is wasted, and this much of computational power they are wasting. Actually, we can say it is wasting to solve a single problem. They can make use of this electricity, this computational power to some other purpose, right? So, to building some other application or something. So, this is a proof of that is the problem with this proof of work concern mechanism, proof of work. 
lot of uh, power electricity is uh, wastage that is the problem so that is why ethereum is now changed their consonant mechanism to proof of stake proof of stake me consonant mechanism the consonant is actually used to why this consonant is used we need to find one node out of which all the nodes that is the only thing there are so many nodes are there we need to find only a single node we need to find a single node not to find a single node we are using consonant we can use proof of work we can give the puzzle and then uh, who solve the puzzle first we can select a, a particular node that is one consonant mechanism that is proof of work so another one is proof of stake consonant algorithm is used to find or select one node that is consonant mechanism okay so uh, proof of stake is another algorithm so in that we are having six nodes we need to find a single node so if it is a proof of stake algorithm we are going to see which node having or which node is taking maximum number of tokens or maximum number of ethers who is having maximum number of ethers in his hand in his account that node will be elected as a minor node that is proof of stake that is proof of stake so in that case no uh, too much of computational power is not required because they are not no need to solve any puzzles and all those things so electricity wastage we can uh, reduce and all those things and uh, usage of this uh, tokens is encouraged so that is proof of stake proof of stake so which node is having too much uh, maximum number of tokens out of this uh, nodes which node uh, is taking too much of uh, maximum number of uh, tokens that node will be selected in proof of stake and uh, proof of burn algorithm is there proof of burn and uh, in that uh, which node is burning maximum number of tokens burning means uh, just uh, simply throw it away okay we can say throw away um, if i am having some money i am just to throw it away something like that which node is burning the tokens which node is uh, burning maximum number of tokens which number which to, which node is burning maximum number of tokens that node will be elected as a minor node so these are the different consonants algorithm used by different different blockchain network but bitcoin still it is used the proof of work ethereum previously used the proof of work now changed it to proof of stake and the proof of burn algorithm i think the ripple or something it is used by proof of uh, burn algorithm and uh, these are the different main uh, consonants mechanism so out of which a proof of work requires a lot of work electricity remaining all uh, consonants mechanisms are very easy. so this is the basic working of a blockchain okay okay now we will uh, see um, what do you mean by smart contract what is the difference between ethereum blockchain and the bitcoin blockchain so actually there are two types of blockchains uh, public yes, and private public blockchain means uh, mainly ethereum bitcoin and bitcoin blockchain that is public and there's so many private blockchains are also hyperledger hyperledger Fabric. Fabric, so choose r3 corda so many private blockchains are also there so first blockchain was this bitcoin that is invented by satoshi nakamoto in 2004 or 5 i think so the only problem with uh, the uh, that uh, bitcoin blockchain is invented only for, for this money transaction transfer the bitcoin to transfer the cryptocurrencies but after that uh, ethereum blockchain was developed in 2014 i think 14 ethereum blockchain has a provision to we can write our smart contracts also there in the blockchain we can write our uh, smart contracts also so blockchain basically it is uh, once the data is stored on the blockchain once the data is stored on the blockchain it cannot be erased that is the main property of a blockchain so if you write a program also there in the blockchain a program cannot be erased or modified that is the advantage of this blockchain we are writing the programs on the uh, blockchain so we 
we are writing programs on the blockchain that is called smart contracts smart contract is nothing but smart contract is nothing but uh, the programs written on the blockchain that is called a smart contract to write a smart contract is very simple we are using ethereum blockchain we are using ethereum blockchain from uh, now on downwards uh, we can write our own smart contract smart contract is just a program and uh, we can deploy this program on the blockchain we can deploy this program on the blockchain okay i can give a very small uh, how to write a smart contract so in the traditional program uh, in the traditional programs or something like a, for example irctc website or facebook they are, uh, it is already written one program for Facebook or IRCDC. So the program is written and, is, and it is stored in a particular server machine. In a server machine. So the problem for this one is, if anyone is, uh, anybody is wanted to update means he can update the code. He can, if IRCDC wishes, he can uh IRCTC officials or the system administrator he can modify the code and uh, deploy it we the users are not aware aware about it what is written on the bike inside we are simply using whatsapp facebook instagram all those things we are using but we are not aware about what type of code it is written on the bike side we, we are not able to see the code or the program that is the main problem with uh, the traditional system. Okay, anyway, we are uh, sending so much of uh, sensitive information to the bike side. So they can modify the code such a way that they can read all those uh, sensitive information or they can sell our information to some other third person. They can rewrite the code on the bike side, but we are not aware of it. That is the problem with uh, the traditional system. But if you are writing the program and deploy on the blockchain, if you deploy on the blockchain, then what will happen is uh, the program will be there in the blockchain. And uh, once it is deployed, nobody can modify the program. Nobody can. And uh, whatever the transaction you are doing on the blockchain, it is completely transparent, completely transparent, completely public. So if you are writing a program or whatever it is, it is completely public. Anybody can verify it. So that is why it is uh, completely transparent. All the things are completely transparent. Okay. Now we are writing a very small program and uh, deploy on the blockchain, deploy on the Ethereum blockchain. So in order to do this one, we are not uh, going to install anything on our system what you can do is go to this website this is a remix id it is called a remix id so here we are writing the smart content when you are opening the website it is uh, showing something like this okay it is showing something like this okay it's showing something like this here you can uh, write the smart contract over here and then deploy on the blockchain you can write in the solidity language. Uh, we are using the solidity language. Okay, you can load the file from GitHub and all those. We can load the file from IPFS. Okay, HTTPS, GIST. Okay. You can load uh, either you can load the file uh, from the GitHub or in anywhere, or you can simply write the programs over here. Okay, not to write the program. What you need to do is on the left side you can see here. Okay, the leftmost side uh, here it is the uh, file explorer. It is a file explorer. You can create a new file. You can create a new folder. Everything you can see over here. It is a search option. Um, and the third one this one is the uh, in order to compile this program you need to use this solidity compiler this one solidity compiler is there and uh, this one is the migration deploy and uh, deploy your smartphone right so these are the three things 
main four things available in this remix ide ide is integrated development uh, environment so these are the main three things here if you click here you can create a new file new folder everything you can create and uh, they create and after I think you already done with some Python program or C++ program. What you have to do is you just write the program first, then compile it, then run it. That is a normal procedure. Same thing we are doing over here. So the first thing is just write the program. Not to write the program, you create a file and then write the program. So first of all, you click here and then write the program, then compile the program. Click here and then compile it. Compile it, then finally you can migrate the smart contract, run the program. So these are the three main steps. Okay, are you in the same uh, place? Remix.etherian.org. And uh, here, uh, can you able to see this one, Solidity Compiler? Okay, if it is not there, what you need to do is, here in the settings is there. Uh, okay, some extension may be there. APFS extension, no, okay, not the settings here. Uh, just above the settings, you can see this one a, a plugin manager. If the Solidity compiler is not there, you can search for Solidity compiler over there and install it. Solidity compiler, okay, not that compiler, Solidity compiler. Okay, because I am having uh, the Solidity compiler, it is not, okay, testing is there, okay. So the, uh, if it is not there, you can add like this. Okay, in my case, it is there, Solidity compiler is there and the deployment is also there. So um, first of all, come to this file explorer. Uh, there are different, uh, different folders you can see. Contracts folder is there, scripts folder is there. Ballot test is there. Oh, test is also written in the Solidity file. Okay. Okay, so uh, test of all is there. Artifacts is there. Okay, it is a JSON file. Okay, thank you. Okay, these are the main folders available over here. And we are writing our programs in the contracts folder because we are writing the smart contract. So in the smart in this folder, we are writing the program. For example, I am going to create a new file. Either you can click on this one to create a new file, or right-click this folder and create a new file. Okay, here I am giving a name called a sample is my smart contract name. And the extension should be .sol. That is the one thing you need to remember. .sol. Okay, see sample two. Maybe sample maybe there. Why? Yeah, sample one is there. Maybe sample is also there. Okay, sample and sample one is already there. Okay, that is why it is. Okay, this is the file I have created. Sample. Okay, the, when you are uh, creating the file, it is uh, looks something like this, nothing inside this. So first of all, we need to create a file. Okay, first of all, we need to uh, create the file dot .sol extension. Okay, have you done up to this? Okay, and after that, you do these two lines. Okay, first line, it is a command. It is not actually required, but better uh, it is the license of our 
smart contract it deals with the license of our uh, uh, i am uh, giving the license as mit license that is uh, it is an open source our smart contract is an open source first two lines and the second line is nothing but okay it is a pragma state pragma pragma solidity solidity and uh, version you can use 0.4.0 greater than and uh, okay what we have done it it is nothing but the solidity version okay so greater than this one and less than 0.8 okay or any version which version you want to do that version you can do 0 0.4.0 or 2 to 22 and less than or equal to uh, 0 0.9 point or 8 point 0 0.8 point 5 okay and uh, put a semicolon now this is uh, the second line before that, let me check the compiler version. 8 point is there. 8.171. Okay, I can rewrite it as 8.17. Any compiler version in between this one? 0 0.1.112. 0 So this is the uh, the second line. The first line is nothing but the come uh, our smart contract uh, license dealing with the uh, smart contract license. The second line deals with the solidity version, the compiler version. If you are doing a Java program or a Python program, you can compile with a Python two point one or Python three point four. Okay, it is a, it is the compiler version. It is the compiler version. Similarly, Solidity also having different different compilers, compiler version. So here I am I am mentioning which compiler version I am going to use. So suppose I am using the Solidity statement as like this: Pragma, Solidity, Solidity, zero point eight point one two. Okay, suppose I am using the uh, compiler version of like this. I can use like this. So the meaning of this is okay. Hold on. Okay, currently it is using 0 0.7.6. Okay. Uh, okay, 0 0.8.1.2 is not at all available. Uh, 0 0.7.1. Okay, is it available? Okay, only six is available. Okay, I can mention just six. Okay, so uh, this is how we can mention a compiler version. So if I am doing like this, 0 0.7.6 means this smart contract is can be compiled only with this compiler version, 0 0.7.6. Or I can either I can use like this, or I can use like this. Okay, an upper. So there is a cap. Okay, cap 0 0.7.0. Either I can use like this. So the meaning is this one. I can use any compiler version with the starting with a 0 0.7.0 i can use 0 0.7.123 0 0.7.21 0 0.7.2 0 0.7.3 0 0.7.4 etc so any greater than 0 0.7.0 i can use that is the meaning of this one so i can use uh, the so every smart contract should start with this line which compiler version you need to use so either if I am removing this one, I am using 
explicitly use this one. That is amazing, 0 0.7.0. So, okay, I can use this one. For better, for safe side, you have to use this one, 0. 0.4.1 and less than or equal to 0 0.8.0. Okay, so this is the uh, first line, the solidity version. We need to specify the solidity version. So the solidity version can be specified like this. In this way, you can specify the solidity version. <coughs> Okay, so uh, we have done up to this line. Okay, no need. This is the comment. Comment is uh, doing like this. And after that, after that, you need to write a smart contract. Our aim is to write a smart contract or a simple program. Simple program we are going to write. So the first uh, line is mention the license, then solidity version we need to specify. The next line is we need to have a, a contract, our smart contracts, a sample contract sample. Okay, so a contract sample we have done like this. So sample is our smart contract name. Sample is our smart contract. So contract is the keyword. Sample is the uh, smart contract. So this is the basic structure of a smart contract. This is how the smart contract is we are writing. This is the basic structure. First uh, license, if you want, you can specify the license. I can make this open license so that anybody can use this uh, this one. So actually smart contract means we are going to deploy on the blockchain. So it is public. So make it as an uh, open source. Okay, so I have made it as an open source and make it license. So next line, we are going to write a statement of which solidity compiler we need to use. So here we have written something like this. So it is written solidity uh, version we have mentioned and the contract name is also we have written. So the contract is there, contract sample. Inside this contract, we need to have our logic. We need to write our logic. Okay, here we can uh, declare different types of uh, variables. Okay, different types of variables and store. And, uh, okay, as a normal program, I am going to write. Okay, string is the data type. String uh, public, make it as a public, string public, str equal to hello world. So I have declared a simple variable. Okay, so this is my smart contract. This is my smart contract. So this is how the smart contract we are writing. Uh, contract name is sample. So smart contract is nothing but any program written on the blockchain that is called a smart contract. So you can write a smart contract for uh, adding to number or uh, uh, selling your um, vehicle or selling your a painting or something uh, or uh, for land registration voting so you can write the, the smart contract like this you can write your own smart contract so we have written the smart contract it is a smart contract actually now you need to compile okay first of all you need to write the smart contract then you need to compile it so click here to compile here this is the file explorer here. Here you can compile it. Okay. In my case, I am uh, making it as an auto compile. If auto compile means it is compiling automatic. Uh, in uh, first time you are opening means it is not auto compile. So you need to compile it manually. Compile sample dot solidity. Okay. Click on this one. If any error is there, you can see the error over here. Okay. It will display over here. For example, if I am purposefully writing something you can see some error over there okay you can see some error because i am made it as an auto compile better you made it as an auto compile make it as an auto compile so now it is compiled successfully if it is compiled successfully you can 
see there is an ABI is created. ABI or bytecode is created. So ABI is nothing but okay. I can show what is ABI is. ABI means it is something like uh, okay. I will explain what is ABI and all those things. I just to copy this ABI. Um, I'm opening in a editor. Okay, I'm opening the editor and I will show you. This is the ABI. I have copied from here. This ABI I have copied. Uh, this ABI is created when the uh, smart contract is compiled successfully. So this is the ABI of this of for that smart contract. Here you can see all information about your smart contract. So type uh, is string. One variable is there, and uh, then type is string. Type is string. And no other variables are there. State immutability is only view. Okay. Only view option is there. There is no way to update this one. So this is the uh, full information about this one. And there is a bytecode is also generated. Okay. We will just see what is the bytecode. This is the bytecode. It is nothing but very the opcode. We can say it is an opcode or a machine level instruction. This is going to be executed in the EVM. <laughs> EVM is nothing but Ethereum virtual machine. This code is going to execute. This is a uh, low level language. It is, very, it is very difficult to uh, understand this one. It is a low level language. So uh, we, uh, our aim is to create this type of smart contract. Our aim is to write this type of smart contract. Okay, first of all, you need to write the smart contract then compile it compile it after that okay uh, uh, have you done up to this compile write the smart contract and compile it compile and uh, you can next go for migrate it okay now i am going to migrate it in order to migrate, you just click over here. Okay, click on deploy. Now it is going to be migrated. Now you can see it is migrated. So uh, status is uh, true transaction mind and execution. Okay, it is my and uh, this this uh, smart contract is migrated to the blockchain or in the blockchain one transaction has been called completed and uh, this is the transaction hash and uh, this account this account is done this transaction this account is this uh, this account is nothing uh, my account i have done this transaction this is my account i have done this transaction and uh, what transaction done is uh, it is done this one okay the smart contract migration and the transaction cost around the uh, gas is 1889 gas fee has been cost. Execution cost is around this one. 163851. This much of gas has been consumed to do this operation. Okay, decoded out input, no output, no input. Long is not there, early is not there. Okay. So this smart contract has been deployed. Once it is deployed, you can see here uh, on the deployed contract, you can see this thing. Okay, you can see this thing. Okay, the contract has been deployed on the blockchain. If you expand this one, if you expand this one, and then this is the contract, smart contract address, this is the one variable. If you click over here, you can see that uh, hello world. It is hello world. That means one blockchain transaction has been executed okay transaction okay from transaction hash to this okay sample dot str we have called this one okay output is uh string is written with a hello world you can hello world is displayed you can see over there hello world is displayed okay so this is uh, how the smart contract is writing now we have talked about the string variable Similarly, we are having different other variables also. Okay, something like this. Suppose I want to store the age, I can use uint. 
you went uh, eight uh, public eight equal to 10 my age is 10 okay i can give something like this u and 8 is another data type if you want to store numbers then you have to use this u window data type this is another variable available over here another one is boolean bool bool public public uh exam passed exam passed exam passed or not equal to false okay i can give something like this this is another way so these are the different variables if you want to store you can store only true either true or false value that is called a bool so you win this integer number string means any string you can store these are the different data types in um, solidity not only this one there is different uh, other types is also there arrays is there and the mapping is also there address is another data type address address okay public uh, public owner owner is equal to okay i can copy an address okay where is the address so many addresses are here i can see some address okay this is one address if i want to store this is the address i have stored okay if you want to store an address you need to use the variable address so these are the different main data types available in solidity these are the string uint boolean and address these are the main data types Similarly, some arrays is also there. You uh, went, you went eight. Uh, make it as an array. Okay, make it as an array. Uh, public marks. Okay, this is another array. This is an array. Marks is an array. Okay, marks is an array. So this is uh, how we are writing different. Uh, data type if you want to store different values then you can go for this one these are the different data types available in uh, solidity language if you want to store different values then you can you have to use this one. okay these are the different data types okay let it be there so these are the different data types mm, i can give this to you for your reference these are the different data types, data types in solidity. And uh, now we have seen this uh, public variables, public. We have written it as public. Uh, there is not compulsory to write always public. There is a private is there, internal is there, and external is also there. So we will see all those things uh, later. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to deploy this smart contract on some other blockchain network how we can write other blockchain network okay before that okay this is the basic thing we need to have a wallet we need to have a wallet in the remix id they are giving their own wallet and they are giving their own address in real scenario we may have our own address we are having our own address we may have our own ethereum address so these are the different ethereum address they have given for us but in the real scenario we may have our own address we can make use of that address okay now it is fine everything is done this is the uh, this is how we are writing the smart contract we will uh, come more deep about the solidity and all those things before that we need to set up one more thing open the metamask account and uh, connect it to this account your latest network
and uh, whenever you are open uh, click here click on the top here uh, either you can uh, see this uh, uh, geo test network over there connect it to geo test network okay uh, so what you need to do is jolly uh, test network and faucet you just check the faucet okay girly faucet is there go to this one and uh, paste your address over here So previously it is a point one. I think I will get a point one also. I got a point zero five. Currently, I am logged in over there. Uh, here, I have a login. That is why I can do it over here. Okay, let me check any other faucet is there. Okay, okay, this one is working. This one will work. This side, go to go and write this one. Just yeah. paste your address over here, and I think you will get it. So, this is uh, MetaMask. Is, uh, I think you already familiar with this MetaMask. MetaMask is a wallet. Yes. We can store Ethereum over here. But uh, uh, while signing up, you should uh, get uh, some uh, passphrase or the key phrase. Keep it safe with uh, you. If you lost this one, means if somebody got this passphrase, means he can import your wallet on their machines, and uh, yes. you can he can use their uh, asset as well. So keep the passphrase very very safe. And uh, each and every account, if you want to create new account. You just uh, click over here and uh, create account. That is possible. And uh, every account, I am having only one account over here. This is my account. So this is my Ethereum account. This is my Ethereum account. And every account is associated with a private key as well. So in order to see the private key, click here and uh, click account details and uh, here export to private keys there this is my ethereum account number this is my account number every account every ethereum account is associated with a private key which is something like a password or something so if you lose this uh, private key and uh, somebody got this private key means he can access your account it is something like an internet uh, banking password or something. So keep this private key very, very safe. So if you lose this private key, they can use this your account. They can uh, access your account. So this is my account. I can expose the private key as well. Uh, go to account details. Export private key. So this is my private key. This is the private key actually. So keep this private key is safe, very safe. If you lose this private key, then uh, somebody get this private key means he can easily, uh, he can easily use that account, easily use that account. 
so yeah. i can share this private key you, to you what you uh, you can do is you can import my account this is my account actually 0833 you just uh, import my account on your machine i am exposing the private key okay you can make use of my account you can use this account. this is my private key okay this is my private key not the address what you can do is you just open the metamask you just open the metamask you can click and account details not account details click over here on the top round symbol and the import account option is there you can import the account from the private key you can import the account from the private key here you need to paste the private key okay that i am sharing okay you can uh, paste the private key over here then my account will be in your wallet so private key should be keep always secret from the private key we can get the public key i mean the address if the private key is uh, exposed anybody can use our account so my account having 0.15 ethereum is there so i am sharing the private key so you just uh, use it you can use this account this is third account you are having you are having one two account already in your metamask it is a third okay. account okay new okay. account and that account having this much of ethereum 0.15 ethereum so currently in your wallet you are having three accounts but i am having only one account if i want i can uh, create one more account okay it is my account account name is account 2 let it be account 2 new account has been created new account has been created now i am having two accounts and account 2 but i don't have any wallet in account 2 so what you need to do is i am sharing this address to you you just transfer 0.05 ethereum okay to this account transfer 0.05 0.05 ethereum okay from the um, okay one account you are having 0.15 right 0.15 ethereum okay from that account you transfer to this account uh, yeah, yeah yeah you have transfer i can see something okay just to copy this one this address and uh, go to jerly explorer everything is uh, what all of the things we are doing is completely transparent right yes, we can sir. check it whether it is yes, uh, you have done or not okay copy this address see 59 seconds ago from this address this is the transaction hash from this address you are transferring you have transferred only zero either now the balance is something it has to be changed Okay, it is all. It is rounded over here. That is why it is on point one five. It is not actually point one five. It is point one four nine 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 something. I am refreshing over here. It is not reflecting. You have done it two second ago from this account to account point zero five. Okay, you have done it. It is a transaction is pending. Okay, I think it has been transferred. Uh, now the balance is point zero nine, around point one. Okay, it is uh, it is transferred, and uh, now I can check it is credited. It is credited. Okay. Okay, so everything is fine. So what all of the transaction you are doing on the blockchain, it is completely transparent. Everybody can verify it. And uh, this transaction, the last transaction you have done is recorded. in this particular block which block it is 3 minutes ago you have done one transaction it is recorded in this particular block and uh, so many other fields is also there you are familiar with the other fields as well okay but currently we have not migrated to the real blockchain anyway i will show how to migrate it uh, we are doing everything in the ring ep in the uh, remix id Okay, next session we will see how to deploy on the uh, main Ethereum network. That is why we need this MetaMask. We need any of the wallet.
that is why we need it. okay today we what we have done is we have created a smart contract we have created a smart contract and it deployed on the remix id itself in the browser itself not in the real blockchain anyway we need to deploy this smart contract on the blockchain real blockchain real ethereum blockchain so that is for that purpose we need to have a wallet that is why we have created this metamask wallet okay